Hi everyone and welcome to Sally Tomato and our YouTube channel for another tutorial. I'm Kate and today I'll be showing you how to create a trendy backpack. The Ava has a lot of different features. I'll be showing you how to create the accented exterior, a zipper flap pocket, and the flap buckle closure, a top zipper closure for a deep pocket, the interior lining, adjustable webbing straps, and then finally a grommet hanger. Jamie, Jess's business partner, designed this bag with his daughter Ava in mind, but I think this bag is so versatile that it can be used for a son or daughter getting ready for school, a parent as they're getting ready for their workday, and even a grandparent as they're planning the day's adventures. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. I'm sure you're ready to get started. Remember, you can always pause the video if you need a little extra time for a step or you need to take a break and refer to your pattern. It's laid out in easy to follow sections with illustrations. So let's gather your fabrics and I'll get started at the work table. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of our pattern cover and the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. You'll need a main fabric, a contrast fabric, and a second fabric that doesn't fray. Then you'll also need lining fabric, webbing for the straps, a small piece of interfacing, foam or fleece, which is optional. I'll be adding foam to give my fabrics extra support. You could also choose to use an interfacing instead of the foam or fleece. And then finally, you'll need a heavy stabilizer for the base. And then we'll need a fun variety of hardware. Zippers, an O-ring, a belt buckle, a screwed together grommet, rectangle rings, slider buckles, and an optional metal handmade label. Also gather a few tools and notions. We've included a list on the back of the pattern cover. Follow your pattern for the cutting instructions and refer to the layout guide at the end of the pattern for efficient cutting. Just a quick note, piece W is supposed to be cut from the lining, but I had extra fabric of the main fabric, which I thought would look really fun. So I cut my piece W from the main fabric. Remember to trace or print the pattern pieces and templates included in your pattern. As you can see, there are a lot of pieces in the Ava, so I recommend labeling all the pieces whether you mark the wrong side of the pieces with removable pen or chalk, or make and clip small labels to your actual fabric pieces. And here's a tip from Jess. She always organizes the like pieces together. For example, a piece A of the main fabric, add the piece A of the lining and foam as well. Keep them all together. I've also found that keeping the smaller pieces organized on a larger panel or pressing surface is helpful. Okay, that is a big job getting everything cut out. And now I think we're ready to center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of the coordinating lining fabric piece N. And remember to follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing your interfacing. All right, let's move on to shaping the base, the top flap, and lining pieces. Position the circle template that's found in your pattern in each corner of the main and lining base pieces. That would be piece E. And trace around the outer edge of the template from edge to edge, and then cut along the marked line to round each corner. You can also base that curved edge with a very a narrow seam allowance Based inside the curved lines with a narrow allowance if needed. This would be if you noticed the curve stretching or rippling and also if you decided to not add any foam, fleece, or interfacing to the exterior fabric. Alright, now you're going to repeat this step to round just the top corners of the lining piece M using the largest corner template and then also round all four corners of the stabilizer piece U using the smallest corner template. 
center the heavy stabilizer piece U on the wrong side of the main piece E base. Use basting spray or basting tape to hold the stabilizer in place. Top stitch piece U along the stabilizer raw edge. Be sure to refer to your pattern for the recommended stitch lengths and seam allowances throughout the AVA pattern. Piece U is actually cut smaller than piece E, so it doesn't get caught in the seam in a later step. The firmness of the stabilizer will help prevent the base of your bag from sagging over time. With right sides up, position the main fabric piece A over the fleece or foam, I'm using foam, piece A, aligning all the edges. And again, you can use basting spray or I'm using sewing clips to hold the layers together while sewing for the next step. Now baste along each edge. A Teflon foot or walking foot may help prevent the fabric from shifting. And you're going to repeat these steps to attach the main fabric E to the foam or fleece, piece E, as well as the lining piece M to the fleece or foam piece M. And then trim the excess foam or fleece close to the stitching, but be careful not to cut into the stitches. Trimming away the foam here will reduce the bulk. On the wrong side of the contrast 2 piece K belt buckle connector, mark in from both short ends and also mark in from each long edge to create a box shape. You can cut out that box shape right away or I'm going to actually top stitch first and then I'll cut out that little box shape. If you're making a different width of belt, remember you'll need to adjust your measurements so that the box shape cutout will stay the same size as listed in your pattern. Then mark a vertical line in from each short end using a removable pen or piece of chalk. Then at the machine, we're going to top stitch with a narrow allowance along both long sides of piece K beginning and ending at the vertical marked lines. Then also top stitch your cutout opening with a narrow allowance. And again, I'll need to cut out my little opening after I finish my top stitching. If you remember, begin and end your top stitching at the same short ends. Then you can place that side so it will be underneath the more attractive side when slipping the piece K over the belt buckle bar. All right, now we're going to thread piece K over the buckle, folding it in half, wrong sides together, and meeting the short ends. I'm making sure that I have the more attractive top stitch side facing the top or upper side of the buckle. Now place the connector centered above the bottom edge of the contrast one piece G front slip pocket piece. Hold in place with basting tape or glue. Now we're ready to top stitch. I did need to transfer my one vertical mark near that belt buckle just so I knew where I would stitch exactly. But we're going to stitch the raw edges and then along that marked line forming a stitched box. And another option would be to top stitch an X within the box stitching or add rivets for an extra detail. All right, now we're ready to make and attach the front slip pocket. So with right sides together, align all the edges of contrast one piece G, that's the front slip pocket, and the lining piece G, and pin them together or use sewing clips. And then we're going to go to the sewing machine and then sew the long sides and the top. And we're going to leave the bottom edge completely open. Now you can trim the top corners at an angle, but be careful not to cut through the stitching. And turn the pocket right side out and then gently press the seams either with your fingers or seam roller or with a small iron. And then at your machine, you'll top stitch along the top edge just like I've done here. Next, we're going to center the pocket on the main piece A front, aligning the bottom raw edges. 
pin or clip in place or even use a little basting tape. And then you'll top stitch along the sides and the bottom holding the pocket in place. Now with the pocket attached, we can move on to assembling the front flap with the short zipper. If you're right-handed, the zipper should open towards the right side, and if you're left-handed, the zipper should open towards the left side. Now align the contrast one piece I, that's the flap zipper pocket bottom, to the bottom long edge of the short zipper, right sides together and matching the ends. You can pin or clip the layers together. Then at the sewing machine, we're going to sew piece I to the zipper tape and then press piece I away from the zipper, keeping the zipper tape flat and top stitch piece I along the seam. Repeat the steps to attach the contrast one piece J flap zipper pocket top to the top edge of the short zipper. Now align one main piece C flap zipper pocket side to the zipper panel, right sides together and aligning the top and side edges. And pin or clip those layers together and then you'll sew along the edge. And it's okay if the bottom zipper panel is a little bit longer, as you can see mine is. Now you're going to press piece C away from the zipper panel and then back at your sewing machine, top stitch piece C. You're going to repeat the steps to attach the remaining piece C to the opposite side of the zipper panel, and then trim the bottom edge straight and even. Then with right sides up, place the zipper panel over the piece W flap pocket lining, aligning all the edges. And you're going to base the edges together with a narrow allowance. And there's just one more piece to add and we'll be attaching the main piece D flap zipper top to the top edge of the flap zipper unit in the same way, but this time do not top stitch piece D seam. This is going to be top stitched later. Okay, now position the larger corner template in each bottom corner of the flap zipper pocket unit and trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge, and then you're going to cut along the marked lines to round each corner. And I've actually added top stitching or basting just inside the marked line to hold all the layers together securely. And this is going to be the perfect time to install a metal handmade label centered just up from the bottom edge of the flap unit for a finished look. And I'm going to set this aside now while we create the flap strap. On the wrong side of contrast to pattern piece L, that's the flap strap end, mark in from the straight end and then align one raw end of the webbing piece P, that's the flap strap, on the marked line on the wrong side of piece L. Position the remaining piece L on top, wrong sides together, aligning all the edges, sandwiching piece P between the layers. Use sewing clips or add pieces of basting tape to help hold the layers together. At the machine, we're going to top stitch with a narrow allowance along all the edges, and then stitch again um, near this short straight end of piece L, just to make sure that you have extra security. All right, back at the work table, mark the hole placements following your pattern piece L on the strap end, and then punch the holes. Now we're going to center the raw end of the strap along the bottom edge of the flap zipper pocket unit, right sides together. Allow the strap to extend beyond the flap edge and then base the strap in place at your sewing machine just like I've done here. On the top straight edge of the pocket flap, mark a horizontal line just down from the top edge and two vertical lines in from each shorter side edge. Cut along the marked lines to create an indented section along the top edge of the flap. We're going to place the pocket flap and lining piece N, that's the top pocket facing, 
right sides together, aligning the top edges. Sew together along the indented edges with a narrower seam allowance and try reducing your stitch length to 1.5 or 2.0 millimeters, especially at the corners for really secure stitches. Now with the stitching completed, snip into the indent corners of the seam allowance, being careful to not cut through the stitches. This is going to help the facing lay flat when you turn the pieces. But first, trim the seam allowance a little bit narrower, and then turn and press piece end to the wrong side of the pocket flap so the wrong sides are together. And if needed, hold the indented seam edge together with sewing clips. And then keep the pocket flap handy, but first we're going to press the bottom edge of each lining piece O, top zipper pocket, to the wrong side. And I find it helpful to use a hot ruler or hot hammer for this step for a crisp, accurate fold. Now with the long zipper right side up and the zipper pull being closed should be at the same end as the flap zipper, as you can see here. And now align the bottom edge of the zipper tape to the raw, which would be now bottom edge of the pocket piece O, oh, just one pocket piece. And as you can see, at the top of my pocket, I have the pressed hem. Sew the bottom long edge of the zipper tape to the raw short edge of piece O. Try using a zipper foot, otherwise feel free to stop and move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. Then back at the work table, press piece O away from the zipper, keeping the zipper tape flat. Position the piece so the lining is wrong side up and the zipper is right side up at the top edge. And now center the indented pocket flap right side up over piece O, aligning the top edges. Position the zipper pull inside the indented area and then use sewing clips and I'm adding some basting tape to help hold the layers together. Then at the sewing machine, you're going to top stitch along the indented seam. With right sides up, align and sew the top long edge of the zipper tape to the raw short edge of the remaining piece O, just as I've done here. Then with right sides together and the zipper at the top, align the pocket bottom and side edges. And if you find it easier to flip your pocket pieces over, that works too. And I'm using sewing clips to hold the edges in place. Now at the sewing machine, sew the side seams, folding the flap out of the way as you stitch and then stitch as close to the zipper ends as possible. You may not get to the exact end of the pocket side edges, but get as close as you can, leaving the bottom open for turning the bag later. Okay, ready for the next step? We'll move on to preparing and attaching the exterior back. With right sides together, align one long edge of contrast one piece H, that's the exterior center back, with one long edge of a main piece B. You're going to pin and clip those layers together and then sew them just as I've done off camera and you can see what I've done right here. Now press piece H away from piece B and then at your machine top stitch along piece H. And then repeat the steps to attach the remaining piece B to the opposite long edge of piece H and here you can see what the back unit should look like. We're ready to attach hardware. Thread webbing piece Q, that's the connector, through the O-ring. Fold the raw ends of the connector so they meet in the middle, which will be the underside, encasing the edge of the O-ring. You may find it helpful to fold the webbing edges slightly just at the O-ring for a smoother fit. Then with right sides up, Center the connector on the exterior back so the fold is just down from the top edge and the o-ring is positioned at the top. 
and be sure to use basting tape to hold the connector in place. Next, you'll mark a horizontal line on the right side of the connector, just below the hardware using a removable pen or chalk. Then using a zipper foot, top stitch the connector following the line and then pivot to sew along the remaining edges. Now my narrow foot is a little longer than most zipper feet, so I'm actually stitching in reverse for a little ways, just so I'm out of the way of the hardware and then I can pivot more easily. Another option, if you like the look, is to top stitch an X within the stitch box for added reinforcement. And I know you can't see what I'm stitching since I have black thread on black web, but I think you'll get the idea. And then while I'm at the machine, I'm going to fold one webbing piece R over one rectangle ring, matching the raw ends. Then baste the ends together with a narrow allowance and do the same for the remaining piece R and rectangle ring. On the right side bottom edge of the back panel, position each rectangle ring connector along opposite piece H seams with the hardware towards the top. Allow the raw connector edges to extend below the panel edge and then baste the connectors in place. And again, you can see my stitching just on the outer edges of the webbing, but baste those in place and then it's time to assemble the exterior. Mark the center of the exterior front and exterior back panels along the bottom edges and also mark the centers along all the edges of the main piece E base. And then with right sides together, you're going to align all the edges of the front and back panels. I'm going to sew the side seams off camera, but be sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of the seams for reinforcement. And now take a few minutes to press those seams open. All right, with right sides together, match the center marks of the front and back panel to the marks on the long edges of piece E, that's the base. Then match the side seams to the center marks along the short edges of piece E and pin or clip the layers together along the base. And you may find it really helpful to take very small snips into the front and back panel straight edges where you're trying to fit the curved edge of the base. This will help relax the front and back panel fabric so that it's easier to stitch around the curved corners. Back at the sewing machine, sew around the base. Take your time as you go around the curves to keep an even seam allowance. Then sew a second row of stitching with a narrower seam allowance for reinforcement. You may find it easier to sew with the base to your machine bed. All right, if you think you'd like to reduce the bulk, clip a few tiny notches into the allowance, but be careful not to cut into your stitching. Then let's keep going. With right sides together, align the zipper pocket flap to the back panel of the bag, aligning the raw top and side edges. Pin or clip the edges together. Now carefully sew along the pin top edge. Again, back stitch at the beginning and the end of the seam, but be really careful to not stitch into the bag seam itself or the seam allowance. And I'm going to need to pause here and check that the zipper and the O-ring are out of the way. So this may be a step that you find easier with the exterior bag turned right side out, but it is doable either way. Okay, this next step has a lot of layers and bulk, so take your time with the pressing and the sewing. First, you're going to press the back and the pocket lining away from the top zipper, and feel free to turn the bag right side out if it's easier for you.
Then top stitch on the right side of the back along the seam, beginning and ending the stitching at the zipper indent top stitching on the pocket flap. Stitch slowly, checking that the exterior and the lining are smooth and flat as you sew. At this point, you'll want your exterior bag wrong side out, so I've already turned mine so it is wrong side out. And now it's time to begin assembly of your backpack interior. Mark a horizontal line just down from the right side top edge of the lining piece A interior front. And then with right sides together, position one long edge of main piece F, that's the front facing, covering the marked line on piece A. You're going to pin the layers together and then sew along the top raw edge of piece F, which I've already done and you can see that right here. Now this step is optional. It's a great chance to position the stabilizer piece V and you'll want that centered and above the stitching on the right side of piece A. Hold that little piece in place with basting tape or glue and adding that stabilizer is going to give the grommet that we'll be adding later extra support. So now you can press piece F up, aligning the raw edge with the top edge of piece A. Baste the top raw edges together, which you can see right here, and then top stitch piece F along the seam. This is optional, but I'm going to top stitch a box centered and between the stitching, securing all the edges of the heavy stabilizer piece B. You could mark lines for more accurate stitching, but I'm just going to find the stabilizer edges with my fingers as I sew. With right sides together, place piece A on lining piece M, that's the interior and flap, aligning the bottom and side edges. Begin sewing the seam at the top edge of piece A, gradually widening the allowance at the bottom edge. Using a wider seam allowance will create a slightly smaller lining, which will fit neatly inside the backpack. And you'll repeat this for the opposite side seam. And then trim the seam allowances to reduce the bulk. All we need to do to complete the lining is mark and attach the lining piece E, that's the interior base, following the same steps used to attach the exterior base, but this time remembering to use a wider seam allowance. I'm going to trim the seam allowance just a little bit here and then turn the interior right side out. And we can slip the interior into the bag exterior with right sides together. Align the top raw edges of the exterior and interior fronts and then use pins or sewing clips to hold that front edge together. And it's back to the sewing machine to sew between the side seams, back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam to reinforce those two spots and be careful to not stitch into the side seams or their allowances, so take your time with this seam. Alright, there's really only two more seams to go. First, open the top zipper at least halfway. Bring the exterior flap and the lining piece M right sides together and align the sides and the top curved edges and you'll want to pin or clip, and I used a lot of clips to try to keep the layers together really even. You'll want to tuck the top pocket in so it doesn't get caught in any of your seams. Now you're going to sew the seam. Again, back stitching at the beginning and end of the seam. Be very careful to not catch any adjacent seam allowances. Snip small notches into the curved seam allowance to help reduce the bulk, but be careful to not cut into the seamed stitches. 
Also check that the inner corners of the seams you just stitched are smooth. Turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and the lining through the bottom unsewn edge of the top zipper pocket. Now pull the top zipper pocket out and align the bottom unsewn edges, those are the pressed hems, and then you'll pin or clip those edges together. Then you'll go to your machine to top stitch that bottom edge of the zipper pocket closed and come back and push the pocket through the top zipper opening and arrange it in place. And then take some time to smooth the lining down into the exterior. Use your fingers to roll the flap and front seams tight and flat and then give them a press. All right, we're back at the machine to top stitch and again beginning and ending between the seams. With the zipper flap right side up and flat, top stitch piece D, that's the seam that I'm stitching right now, and you'll secure the lining at the same time. All right, we are ready to install the grommet. So first mark a placement and then you can insert your grommet centered below the top edge of the bag front. And be sure to visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on how to install this hardware. All that's left is to complete the straps. In order to prevent the raw ends of the webbing pieces from unraveling, melt each end of the strap by lightly touching it to a lighter. If your webbing is cotton, like I'm using, or you're uncomfortable with melting the raw ends, sew over each raw end with a wide zigzag stitch multiple times. I'm using a straight stitch machine, so I've got a great tip from one of our pattern testers, Rita. She recommends cutting a piece of leftover contrast to fabric, that's our non-raveling fabric, in a one and a half inch by one inch piece and then wrap that little piece over the raw end of the webbing pieces and top stitch. This is a neat, clean finish, especially for a straight stitch machine. Now thread one end of piece S, the strap, over the center bar of the slider buckle. Then fold the end of the strap to the underside and top stitch the end to itself, just like I've done here. You can kind of see on the contrast fabric a little bit better. Now you're going to thread the opposite end without the slider buckle through a rectangle ring on your bag. Thread the strap end over the center bar of the slider buckle. And then to complete the strap, thread the end through the O-ring. And you may find it helpful to fold the strap edges under in that O-ring for a little bit smoother fit. Fold the end of the strap to the underside and then top stitch the end of the strap to itself. And you'll repeat the same steps to attach the remaining strap piece for the second strap. And your Ava backpack is ready. Ready for school, ready for work, or ready for a weekend getaway. We'd love to see your version of Ava. Share a photo of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Ava Backpack. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Maybe you learned a new technique or a new tip. And I'd like to thank Jamie for such a fun design. I think Ava is going to go a lot of places. So thank you for sewing with me today and I'll see you again soon.